The decoration on the outside of the box includes the words faith. They were originally a part of the box, but the blood was added. The crank is a metal zinc rod that was bent, and then a spare leg from our doll was attached to add to the eerie design. The pictures on the side of the box are based off the show American Horror Story. These pictures were coated with shellac to give them a gloss appearance and feel. The hinges and screws were covered with cloth to bring the design together. An Arduino Uno was used as our microcontroller. We used two shields on top of it as well. The top shield is the wave shield. It is used to output audio for our jack-in-the-box in the wave format. Below that is the servo shield. The servo shield can have up to 16 servos running at the same time using I2C. The capacitor added on was to help make sure that the servos were protected from any voltage drops from the power supply. The power from the barrel jack is split up between the Arduino and the servo shield. This is to have a separate supply to power the motors which protects the Arduino from having too much current or transients from the motors running through the Arduino. The encoder was attached using a shaft coupler. It is a rotary encoder which is used to generate interrupts when the crank is turned. The speed of the music will change depending on the time difference between interrupts. The music will play at a pseudo-random interval from 5 to 10 seconds before the jack pops up. The torsion springs shown here are to help make sure the lid of the box pops open when released. A wood block was attached to the lid and cut at an angle for the springs to push against. The latch assembly also used a torsion spring as a hook which clasped an eyelet mounted in the top of the box. The latch releases when a servo arm pulls back on the torsion spring, freeing the eyelet and allowing the lid to spring open. During closure, the eyelet pushes the hook on the spring, thus sliding into a latched position. The latch gave us a lot of trouble because the first servo we used was not strong enough to pull the torsion spring's hook back through the eyelet every single time and overcome the upward force of the doll and hinge springs. The torsion spring itself also moved from side to side so that the latch didn't close every time until we put a lock nut to secure the spring's position. To ensure the doll pops out of the box, a cloth was added as a buffer between the doll's head and the back wall of the box. As the lid opens, the cloth moves with it, as does the doll's head. Care must be taken when closing the box that the doll's head rests properly on the cloth. There are a total of five servo motors mounted inside the doll. The first servo operates the chest opening and closing. The second servo is a continuous rotation servo that controls the rotation of the head. It is attached via a metal plate. Additional slack in the wiring was necessary for this action. Each arm is directly attached to a separate micro servo that controls the movement up and down. Since each arm has its own dedicated servo, they are able to move independently of one another, which makes the doll seem more lifelike. The fifth servo is mounted to a plate that is attached to the hinges inside the doll's head. This servo opens and closes the doll's head and reveals a frightening image of a brain. Inside the head there are LEDs that light up during the plays as well.